This video is on the chemical elements. There are major divisions, there are five major divisions of chemistry. The first is the physical chemistry, which applies to the theory of physics. And second is the analytical chemistry, which identifies what and how much is present. And uh, organic chemistry deals with uh, carbon containing compounds. And uh, inorganic, ch inorganic chemistry is for non carbon containing compounds. And uh, finally, biochemistry, it deals with chemical reactions that occur in living organisms. Okay, so I think in chapter five, we talked about um, the different states of matter. Matter can be, can exist in three different states, solid, liquid, and gas. And what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Okay, so matter can be actually divided into two different sections. The first one is the pure substance, and the next one is a mixture. So pure substance can be either an element or a compound, and later down the chapter, we'll talk about what is element and compound. And mixture can be homogeneous and heterogeneous. We will look into the definitions for this later on. Okay, now what is a pure substance? It is a type of matter in which all samples have fixed composition and identical properties. Okay, and they are subdivided into uh, element and compound. Now suppose if you take gold atom, okay, it is going to have exactly the same number of protons. Okay, and... Um, uh, also take oxygen and it is going to definitely have exactly the same number of protons uh, for any oxygen atom okay and uh, let's go on to compound compound is formed when two or more elements combine with each other in a fixed uh, in a definite fixed ratio by mass okay suppose if you take water what's the formula for water the formula for water is h2o so for every ox oxygen there are two hydrogens in it okay and similarly if you take sodium chloride which has this formula okay so for every sodium there is one chlorine atom okay so compounds are made uh, by two or more elements which are combined in a definite fixed ratio by mass a compound can be broken into its separate components only by chemical processes Okay, here are some good examples of compounds of pure substances, rhodochrosite, halite, NaCl rock, lone star cut, and um, topaz. Okay, now let's go on to mixtures. What are mixtures? It's a type of matter that is composed of varying proportions of two or more substances that are only partially or physically mixed and not chemically combined. Okay, so you can see... Um, um, two or more substances in a mixture and they are subclassified under two different two different sections which is homogeneous and heterogeneous homogeneous as the name says it is uniform throughout okay so if you're preparing a tea solution suppose if you prepare tea tea is made of water it is uh, it is made, uh, made of water sugar and tea and when you filter this out, you will get a homogeneous solution where you cannot actually see all the different components mixed. You cannot see the individual sugar molecules in it. You cannot see the individual individual uh, water molecules in it. Okay, but as such, it's going to uh, be uniform throughout. And um, heterogeneous, uh, here you can actually see at least two com components. Okay, say for example, if you see uh, uh, if you have a look at the pizza. Uh, there is a crust which you can actually see and there is a tomato layer tomato sauce layer and then um, and then the cheese and also you can see all the toppings on it so such a such a mixture is heterogeneous mixture and these are formed and broken down by physical processes and some of the physical pro processes include dissolving or dissolution and evaporation or sometimes even filtration Okay, so basically this slide is going to tell the chemical classification of matter. Matter is divided into two different um, uh, substances, pure substances and mixture substances. Pure substances, they have fixed composition and properties, whereas mixture is going to have variable composition and properties. Pure substances can, add, can further be classified under uh, two different heads, element and compound. Um, element, its atoms have exactly the same number of protons. Whereas compounds, several elements, they combine together to form compound. And uh, in mixture, 
uh, mixture can be further divided into homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture is going to be uniform throughout, whereas heterogeneous mixture is not going to be uniform. Okay, next let's go on to solutions. What are solutions? Solutions are made of solvent and solute. Now, what is the solvent? Solvent is basically a liquid or the substance that is present in large quantity. And solute is the substance that is used for dissolving the solvent. Okay, so again, solutions are divided into two different sections, two different uh, categories. So you can divide solutions into unsaturated solutions and saturated solutions okay now let's see how we can prepare a saturated and unsaturated solutions okay so let's imagine that uh, uh, in general if you take 100 milliliter of water you can only dissolve a total of 36 grams of NaCl which is a common salt which is a table salt okay so anything below 36 grams, if you make a solution, anything below the 36 grams of sodium chloride um, in 100 milliliters of water, that's going to be a, an unsaturated solution, which means it is not satisfied. If you go over the 36 grams of NaCl, then it's going to be a saturated solution. Okay, so let's take a, pic, uh, take a look at this picture. Okay, so in the first case, they are preparing... 30 grams, they are preparing a solution which has 30 grams of sodium chloride in 100 milliliters of water. Okay, so such a solution can take in more of the sodium chloride. It can take still 6 grams of um, NaCl. Okay, and therefore it is unsatisfied. It can take more. Okay, and therefore it is said as an unsaturated solution. Suppose if you dissolve, if you try to dissolve 40 grams of sodium chloride in the same 100 milliliters of water, okay, you can see that there is uh, some amount of the sol sol solute, which is a sodium chloride, remaining at the bottom, okay, and therefore it is said to be a satisfied solution or saturated solution, okay, so it, it is satisfied with whatever amount of sodium chloride that it has in its solution, and therefore it's not ready to take any more of the solute, okay. So again, keep in mind that solute is usually a solid, but it can also be a gas. Uh, solvent is a liquid that you use in large quantity to dissolve the solute. Okay, now what are aqueous solutions? So aqueous solutions are solutions that are made with water. Okay, so basically you can make a solution with anything. Okay, the solvent can be anything. You can take water or you can take uh, alcohol or you can take ethers. But aqueous solutions are solutions which are where, sol where, the, where water is the solvent. Okay. okay, so when dissolved and stirred, the distribution of the solute is the same throughout. So usually it will be homogeneous. Again, you can further divide it into unsaturated solution and saturated solution. So unsaturated solution, more solute can be dissolved in the solution at the same temperature. Whereas saturated solution, the maximum amount of solute is dissolved in the sol solvent. It cannot take any more of the solute. Okay, so in a saturated solution, there is always a dynamic equilibrium that exists between the solute dissolving and the solvent cr uh, crystallizing. So usually some undissolved um solute remains on the bottom of the container and uh, a dynamic equilibrium which is also called as active equilibrium is set up between the solute dissolving and the solvent uh, between the solute dissolving and solute crystallizing so the solution remains saturated all the time okay. next is the solubility solubility is the amount of solute that will dissolve in a specified volume or mass of solvent at a given temperature to produce a saturated solution. Remember, solubility is going to be different at different temperatures. Okay, if you raise the temperature for most of the solids, um, the solubility is going to increase. Okay, say for example, uh, in the previous example that we have seen, um, let's say that this is at room temperature. Okay, so if you increase the temperature, what's going to happen? It's not only the 36 grams of sodium chloride that's going to dissolve in the 100 milliliters of water. It can take in even more than the 36 grams um, at higher temperature. Okay, so here is a graph 
that shows how the temperature can have an effect on the solubilities of the different compounds in water okay so if you take sugar okay so for sugar uh, at a temperature of 40 degrees okay it can dissolve 220 grams but a temperature of let's say at a temperature of 60 degrees it can uh, it can dissolve up to like 280 grams of sugar what it can dissolve 280 grams of sugar so you can see that as the temperature increases the solubility of compounds also increase but it's not going to be true in all the cases say for example if you take cesium 3 sulfate okay its solubility is going to decrease with temperature so with 40 grams it's actually dissolving about 10 grams of cesium uh, 3 sulfate but as the temperature goes down its solubility is decreasing okay so the temperature can have an effect on the solubilities of the salts in water Okay, now what is a supersaturated solution? Okay, when you prepare an unsaturated solution at a higher temperature and then you cool it, a saturation point may be reached as the solution cools. Okay, but sometimes uh, when the saturation point reaches, there, will, there may not be any crystals present. Okay, so if you want to, um, if you want the a substance to crystallize, then either the surface needs to be um, uneven or you can scratch the uh, walls of the test tube or the walls of the petri dish to initiate crystallization okay or another way that you can do is suppose if imagine that this is the um super saturated solution if you are going to add a seed crystal what is the use of seed crystal is to initiate um crystallization so when you add a seed crystal in here the solution is going to slowly crystallize okay so you can see that all of these is crystallized okay. now uh, the next one is the solubility of gases the solubility of gases increases with increasing pressure so the great example would be um would be C, uh, carbon dioxide escaping when you open a beverage can so you can imagine that the carbon dioxide is actually um, dissolved in the in the solvent in your water okay and as soon as you open the soft drink bottle there is going to be um, the lots of pressure that is inside the can is going to come off um, liberating the carbon dioxide gas the solubility of gases decreases with increasing temperature hot soft drinks quickly lose their carbon dioxide 